Growing up, I played a lot of the Sierra impression games. You know, Zeus Master of Olympus, Caesar III, Pharaoh, and Cleopatra. But for a while, it felt like that entire genre just disappeared off the face of the earth. I'm sure there are some games in the genre that I just missed. However, there were very few that matched the original titles. I remember years ago, playing the Builders of Egypt demo on Steam. That game is no closer to release. Now, to be fair, there have been a couple small projects like Nebuchadnezzar, and Pharaoh did get a remaster recently, which is really cool. Though I do think a little bit of the original was lost in that remaster because combat changed. And then I found Citadelum, a game that feels so like Caesar 3 in so many small and large ways. The demo did an absolutely incredible job presenting this, and so I'm very excited to share my first impressions, and I'm going to be playing it in the future. So be sure to get subscribed, maybe leave a like while you're down there if you want more Citadelum content. But for now, let's get into things. Bows fast. There's no press play or anything, just you load into the game, you're in the game. So, Perusia, 40 BC. A period of civil war is sparked by the assassination of Julius Caesar on the Ides of March, 44 BC. The hands of a group of senators. Gaius Octavius, Caesar's adopted son, returns to Rome to take revenge on the aggressors and confronts Lucius Antonius, brother of Marcus Antonius, in the city of Perugia. After besieging the city, he orders it to be destroyed in retaliation against the traitors. It is your mission to move there together with a group of colonists and start the construction of a new city under the name Augusta Perusia. So basically, I am the least lucky governor in all of Rome who they found as the sucker to rebuild the city that was just destroyed in a war. But you know what? Sure, let's go with it. Uh, let's try to rebuild by getting 35 plebeians to live here. All right, good news. I now have four houses. Everyone's unemployed. But I'm following the tutorial, so I will let the tutorial just do its thing. I suspect I have plenty of money to complete this demo. And, ooh, let's uh, take a look here. Yep. They're just all chilling, living. I'm sure their houses are about to, yep. I knew that was going to happen. It's like, fire stations, by the way. So, engineer post. Yeah, this really is just a Caesar game. Well, Caesar game, but for the new era, which I am so down for. Like, hell yes. All right, let's uh, set that there. And the engineer's post, like so make a, a chill little road here. Oh. I forgot placement. Whoops. Uh, move. Just gonna spin it around. Buildings. Oh, you have to assign people. That's a little different. I understand. So, one, two, three, four. Hmm, I'm going to go for one. My, my town's pretty small. Okay. Watermill and aqueduct. I gotta say, this fire's really polite. It hasn't completely burned down their house yet. It's almost like that was a scripted event for the tutorial. That's going to make it easy enough for me to do. Okay. And then, what, a cistern? Yeah, like a, a cistern here. Perfect. I probably built that a little too close. But that's okay. It's all on fire. It's on fire. Aren't you going to put off a... Yes, he's putting off a fire. He's standing in the fire to put off a fire. Okay, maybe I should give him some help. Here you go. Yeah, there goes some of my money. It's okay, they're doing good work. To be fair, I have 13 unemployed plebeians, so I'm sure I could fix this, but... There we go. The logging camp allows you to gather wood. You'll be able to mine stone and quarry iron. You can check the mini-map for resources. Then you need... 
do I even need to read the tutorials or can I just be like, this is literally Caesar 3? Because I feel like I can just be like, this is Caesar 3. Yeah, lowers zone desirability, which is why... Oh, wait, is this the resource range or is this the lower desirability range? I wonder. Well, I'm going to put it here. Prestige level unlocked. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, yet again, I need to move this quickly. And then connect to my road all the way over to the aqueduct. Oh, I can go through. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And material production, logging camp. Hits two of the houses, it's fine. One worker's fine. Let's see, I'm supposed to build a logging camp, a stone quarry, build a warehouse. Well, I've done half of this stuff. Maybe I'm supposed to put four people on it? Oh. Oh, I found a problem. I indeed found a problem. I made the wrong building. So let's try this again. This time with a logging camp. You know, the thing we're supposed to actually make. Oh, okay. I like this. I like that there's little arrows to where you're supposed to go. Build, let's just say, another warehouse. Oh, the engineer's post doesn't work. Right. One of these days, I'll get the hang of this. It will not be for a bit. So you can see happiness, blah, 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 favor. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So move. I'm a worker. I'm sure you'll be fine. Crops. Cool. And this should be where my farms go. Grapes. Ooh. Onions. Wait. Cabbage orchard. I have never heard of cabbages being grown in an orchard before. I definitely haven't heard of onions being grown in an orchard before. I am uh, very suspicious. It's almost like I played a lot of these games growing up. Uh, like that. And up to eight people. Oh, oh the engineer's post caught on fire. Hmm, huh. let's fix this. Is this the correct way to fix an engineer's post catching on fire? No, but it's okay because we're not always about the correct way. We're about this way works. And you know what? I need more workers. So you guys who aren't technically doing anything right now, you can go here and then patrician housing. Their needs are higher. Got it. But my mission says to just get... Oh, now I need patricians? Really? I now need patricians on top of the plebeians. Okay. Whatever you say, game. First of all, more plebeians. Oh, that caught on fire fast. So I've now made two patrician houses and... Currently, I'm not taxing them, but they want food, and they specifically want cabbage. Good thing I already started adding cabbage to my granary. Let's see, where do I tax them? Military defense. Uh, services. Probably services. Tax office. Yes. We need ourselves a tax office because... People are costing us money. There we go. Look at this bustling little town. And you know what? I'm going to add one more bit of plebeian housing. Because as I remember, I need specifically 35. There we go. 
and you become tax collectors to tax the rich people to account for the fact that I'm losing 600 drachmas? Is that right? Or is that the Greek one? Oh, I can't remember now. It's been too long since I played these games. So far, this game feels like what you would get if you took Caesar 3 and you updated the graphics and smoothed out the gameplay just a little bit here and there. Okay, time to continue. Got it. So I think this is tutorial done. Also, oh my god, taxing people for the win. Tax more people. Reach Prestige 3, 15 total patricians, and 40 total plebeians. All right, so we're going to go way beyond the initial requirements. Hmm. While this does lower desirability, I bet I can get away with some more plebeian housing over here. Like, right on the edge of my market zone. So now I need to create a trade route and send resources to Rome. Go. Oh. Hire a bunch of extra granary workers now. And market workers. Procedure level three. See? All I had to do was hire more market workers. Whole bunch of new buildings, including some things to make stuff beautiful. Doctor's office. All right. You can now explore the region map. Oh, oh, you get an explorer and it's tile based. You know, I like this. This is cool. Oh, the fog is slowly fading. No, the fog is not fading. Oh, yes, it is very slowly. Got it. So now I go back to my city and I do some stuff while I wait to discover the city. Hmm. Do I actually need onions? These guys don't seem to care. So I probably don't need onions. So we'll just demolish that for now. I did the good old overbuild thing, but I, I probably shouldn't have. Ah, yes. The wonderful patrician class taxes. Oh, prestige four. I can totally make things prettier, right? Oh, that caught on fire. Go, my new firefighters. Ah, but some of these things require resources that I don't have. Well, now that the Tane is connected, you can trade with them. To establish a trade route, you need to specify what you want to buy and what you want to sell. Mm, build it near warehouses, granaries, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes. But first, I'm making city pretty. I definitely shouldn't have made this, like, all houses packed in area. Oh, well. Small mistake. That's okay, though. We'll just do this. And then... Put a fountain... I don't know, right behind here. Yep, that worked. Fountain OP. Fountains are also quite expensive, so I probably shouldn't use too many of them. Right. Starting to get the hang of this. I think desirability is a little bit harder when you can't just build a mosaic plaza. Prestige 9. Oh, wait. Wait, I can use regular... Oh, I can use my same trick. Never mind. Back to my old tricks it is. Wait, no, that's a garden. That's not a mosaic. What am I thinking? What's wrong with me? Wait, why can I put that there? Can I just get rid of the road? Oh my god, I can. That's so bad. And also so good. Oh! Oh, I see. Paved roads increase desirability. Okay, I solved a slight maintenance problem over here. Luckily, I have a good number of unemployed plebeians. And so now, only sell one above 200. And then for this, it's... By 10 per day. Hmm. I'm going to try to balance things.
Wait, I can just buy all 75 in one day. Forget it. And the other thing is, I can just produce more wood. So it's fine. Perfect. Also, look at all that daily income. Look at that beautiful, beautiful tax from a patrician class. Yes, yes. Sit around doing nothing, my wonderful money bags. Now I can send all of the marble to Rome. Mission accomplished. So in compared to the old Caesar games, there are quite a few optimizations, or maybe you could say quality of life features. For example, you can pull workers from anywhere. And instead of relying on people who will fallibly walk up and down streets, buildings have a well-defined work radius that seems to work pretty darn well, even when your roads aren't the best. And hey, I'm not a civil engineer, so my roads definitely aren't the best, Roman or not. At the very least, if you remember to assign your workers and make sure your building is correctly rotated. I very much forgot the correctly rotated part way too often. And resource management is a lot more streamlined as well, with different buildings forming these nice little supply chains. And I really like the supply chain feature. Now, in practice, I was doing that in the old games as well. But in terms of just seeing it, having nice pretty pictures and everything clicks together, yeah, it's really cool to see. Oh, I've completed the supply chain, yes. But as always, you need plenty of fire brigades and engineers, otherwise your entire city is going to burn down while collapsing. I did notice fires were especially aggressive, probably equally to, if not more so than the original games. However, A, plague didn't break out in my city once, so that's a plus, and B, buildings don't just automatically burn down now. So if something catches fire, it's fine as long as the fire gets put out. Again, nice little quality of life features. On the one hand, do they make the gameplay easier? Yes. On the other hand, do they make it feel less jank? Absolutely yes. So overall, if I'm comparing it back to Caesar 3, or if I very least my nostalgia for it, it was a surprisingly smooth experience that really did capture the soul of the original. You provide food, services, and increase the desirability to encourage your plebeians and patricians to move into better houses, just like you did in the original game. And just like the original game, I'm sure if you want a palace, it's going to be an absolute pain to make those residents happy. Why do they have to be such prima donnas? It's not like they're the gods or anything. And as more people make your city their home, well, it unlocks more city tiers, which means additional buildings and upgrades of visual appearance, which again, it's a nice little flourish. It makes me feel like, damn, I did a good job there. Instead of being one rating short, then finding out that the emperor is displeased with me because I've been borrowing too much from the royal coffers and now he's going to ship me off somewhere else. Now, the empire management actually reminds me a lot more of Zeus Master of Olympus than Caesar III, because empire management was very, very basic in Caesar III. And yes, I am comparing this to another game. I know, I know, Citadel should stand on its own, but let's be honest. I'm nostalgic for Caesar III. If you're watching at this point, you're probably nostalgic for Caesar III. And so far, the developers have done a really good job of living up to those expectations while adding nice new things, like again, the exploration where the military gameplay clicks with me a lot better than the Pharaoh remake. Because here, I feel like I have a world to explore. I can actually control my troops and hopefully the battles aren't fully automated. I really want to control my troops in battle. Unfortunately, the second mission in the tutorial, while it does have combat, probably to teach you that system, the demo ended right there. I was like, no, I want to see combat. Let me see combat. Please just let me control my units. They can be sort of automated like they were in the original games where you control the Legion. That's fine, but please let me control them. Don't just auto fight everything out. But not everything was sunshine and roses. And Rome wasn't built in a day. So here are a couple of points that I'd say are areas of improvement or things that frustrated me playing through the demo. First up, my farms would sometimes complain that the granaries were full. But when I checked, the granary not only had plenty of space, but multiple workers waiting around. I don't really know what was going on here. It was kind of frustrating. I'm guessing it's a bug. I couldn't really pin down the source. Maybe the farm worker was missing. Either way, people were stuck at the farm with goods. The granary had open space. I never really ran out of resources. I never had a cascading failure within my city as a result of it. But it did happen enough that I noticed, so hopefully that'll be sorted out. And then when it comes to maintenance, I'd really love it if the engineers and firemen would join a network, especially as you build coverage across the city, because staff didn't really feel impactful here. If I assigned one person, it seemed like he took about as long to notice and put out a fire as if I assigned four people. 
Now, I think it would be really cool if, let's just say, I had four people in one place and one in another. You can call in the other four. They come from across the city. They do their thing, put out the fire even faster. But as it was for these buildings, I was pretty much just doing the minimum. And so what's the verdict? Well, more of this immediately, please. I can't wait to play the full version of the game. Growing up, I was a big fan of all of the Sierra Impressions games. Pharaoh, Caesar III, Zeus Master of Olympus. Those were the three that I played the most, and this feels like a spiritual successor to those games. It takes a lot of the basic progression mechanics. I half remembered what I was going to build next in Citadelum just based on Caesar III, which was really good, and it made the game for me super, super intuitive. But it also has modern things like better radius-based buildings and easier worker allocation. In short, fixing some of the jank that was in part intentional design choices and in part a product of the game's time. So every end result for me was a demo that feels both very familiar and also fresh and new. That said, I only got to play the full first mission and most of a second before the demo ended, which was right before combat. I really wish we could have seen combat just so I know if I get to control the units. But that said, I am already sold. I was a big fan of these games and a big fan of his genre, and in general, a big fan of mission-based city builders in general. I'm really, really happy about this. Now, unfortunately, there is no date. Right now, it just says 2024, but I've requested access to a playtest, and who knows, maybe I'll share more of my experiences if I do get access. And if not, then I very much look forward to playing the game when it releases in 2024. What about you? Have you played a lot of city builders? And if so, are you looking forward to Citadelum? And if not, What's your favorite city builder? Let me know down below. Maybe I'll make a video on it. And if you're looking for something else to watch, well, maybe check out my thoughts on Cataclysmo, which is a city builder slash RTS that made it pretty darn awesome. I'll link to my experiences with a demo up in the card and down below. And of course, before I go, a big thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you cannot make videos just like this one possible. Link to support is down below. And a big thanks to everyone who watched to the end. I'm glad you enjoyed the video. I wasn't too, too into Steam Next Fest this time, mostly because I was playing Elden Ring, but I absolutely had to talk about Citadelum because I had so much fun and because it's so up my alley. So if there's anything else that you can recommend that you want me to check out, let me know down below. Can't guarantee I will, but if it's anything like Citadelum, there's a pretty decent chance. And if I do check out your recommendation, well, I'll see you again in that video.